فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روب الخير عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر In Jannah, in Paradise, in Heaven, there will be that which no eye has ever seen, no ears have ever heard about or understood in terms of sound, and no mind or no heart would have ever even thought about it. Which means today I can sit and think about anything I want, and I promise you, I guarantee you, if you are to get to Jannah and to Paradise, you will find something much better than that. May Allah grant us Paradise. Amin. And by the way, don't think that Paradise is like your house or mine, where only ten people fit in and the rest of them will have to wait outside. No, Paradise is so broad. Allah says, "Wasariu." إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض. Speaking about making haste towards seeking the forgiveness of Allah so that we can earn paradise, Allah speaks about how broad it is, how big it is, how huge it is, and He says, just the width of it is greater than the earth and the heavens. And in another place, He mentions. That which is even beyond that, in brief, paradise is so broad that we would be wrong to think we are the only ones going there. May Allah subhanahu wa taala make us from among those who understand. The reason I say this is, while we are correcting each other, while we are speaking to each other, reminding each other of getting close to Allah, to the Almighty, because that is what will earn us paradise. When we are close to Him. He will definitely grant us paradise. Just like if you and I were close to each other, it would be easy for me to walk into your place. I would be more than welcome, Subhanallah. I would be more than welcome because there is a link, there is a connection. So, my brothers and sisters, let's keep trying to build this connection without losing hope. But in the process, while we're speaking to each other, we tend to find the devil creeping in and making us think that you know what, I am going to heaven. But I think the others are all not going there, and that's the biggest mistake because the day of judgment is the day when the decision shall be made as to who will go and who won't go, and we live our lives and die the death, having hope in the mercy of the Most Merciful. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant that to us. So, making mention of the origin and the fact that it is so important for us to keep pondering whenever we see others. People, no matter what nationality, no matter where they come from, what color, what financial standing, no matter, for example, how tall or short or good-looking they may be. And by the way, everyone is good-looking. It's just a matter of taste. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Everyone is good-looking. Nobody can say, "Did you see that guy? He looks so ugly." Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. You know, it is it is a matter of choice and taste. Subhanallah. And Allah has created everyone very different. I visited a country without saying names, and they told me in our country, a woman, in order to be considered really good-looking, she has to weigh more than 80 kilos. And I thought to myself, I think a lot of the world will disagree with you, but it's okay, fine, mashallah, tabarakallah. So one day I had a sister come to me and say, Sheikh, please, you know, help us uh, make du'a for me. I'm a little bit on the heavy side, and I really want to get married, and so on and so forth. I told the sister, it's not a bad idea to travel to X Y Z country. And she said, Why? And I said, Because you decided to introduce yourself by saying I'm on the heavy side, not realizing that to some you're just like a feather. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us goodness and protection. Learn to love yourselves, my brothers and sisters. When you look in the mirror, you need to love what Allah has made you like. Be appreciative of the gift of Allah. This is what Islam teaches us. And this evening, we're talking about Islam. We're talking about togetherness. And this is why I started this way to say, "I am your brother." Do you feel that? Do you feel the connection? Well, I do. I may see you, and I see others, and I saw so many people even yesterday and today and every day. And wallahi, I try my best to feel this connection, and I'm here to share it with you because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْعَالِمِينَ 
indeed from his signs is that he has created the heavens and the earth and the differences in your colors, your races, as well as your languages. It's a sign of the Almighty, His mercy, His greatness. It's not a sign for us to become people who dislike and detest one another. And this is why he caps the verse by saying this is indeed, these are indeed signs, lessons for those who know, for those who have knowledge, for those who would like to understand. And if you look at Surah Al-Hujurat, again, Allah makes mention of the origin of man. And He tells us, you should not hate one another, dislike one another based on your race, based on, for example, the tribe you come from, the people you belong to, because ultimately you're all one. Allah says why He made us different colors, races, shapes, sizes, identity, etc. Let me mention the verse and then we talk about it a little bit more. Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa unfa wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu Allah says, O oh people, we have created you from a single male and female. And we have made you into tribes and people. We have made you into different people, nations, tribes, etc. In order that you recognize one another. Today you look at me and you know who I am. Why? Because the mercy of Allah, He made me different from you. Imagine, I can see people, mashallah that I recognize because I know their features have been made different as a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times have you heard me give you the example of the number plate of a vehicle which is necessitated because the vehicles look all the same. So if we all had to look exactly like whom we consider the model who's the prettiest or the most beautiful or the most handsome on earth, we would need number plates subhanallah. I would call you 356, please come here. And then I would see, well, 356 is here. Oh, sorry, you're 481, you can wait a minute, subhanallah. And it wouldn't just be a short number because we are billions, I wonder what, <laughs> what it would get to. But be realistic, isn't it a gift of Allah? Some are tall, some are short, some, some mashallah, their facial features, every one of us different. In fact, your thumbprint, your iris print, everything is different. I heard that even if you were to shave your hair and you, would, you were to take a design of that hair and the way it grows, everyone is different, just like a zebra and a giraffe. Where I come from in Africa, every one of their stripes and spots are different. Subhanallah. The greatness of the creation of Allah. So if you think that Allah created you, say we were giraffes, okay, to make it interesting. If you think that Allah created you in order to become haughty when you see a giraffe that spot that has spots that perhaps have a smaller shape or size or larger, etc then you've lost the plot. You don't know why Allah made you. It's actually in order to recognize you. That's it. And that's why he says, The most honorable and the most honored, the best from among you are those who are most noble. Those who've developed their link with their maker. Because that link with the maker will definitely make you realize and recognize that you have to be kind to everything connected to that maker. And that maker has made not just me, but everyone else. So to begin with, to show my relation with Allah, I need to show my relation with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. If not, I've lost. So I'm kind to you. Because Allah made me and made you. What makes me better than you? Nothing. Allah says when you're closer to me, you become better. And the day we will judge who was closer is not now, but later on. So keep trying. Keep trying. And that's the beauty of it. Imagine at the end of the day, just like those dealing in Bitcoins, if you have that Blockfolio app, subhanAllah, and every day at the end you look at it, and the last few days it's been really crashing. And you look and you say, <gasps> You know, I've done so bad and the following day it goes up. Wow, okay, we gained and you message your friends. Did you see what happened to the Verge coin today? And so on. All that excitement 
We will have a day of judgment at the end because we cannot every single day have a day of judgment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us through the blessed companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, a statement such as that of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, where he says, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Learn to take account of your deeds before they're taken account of. Because I need to know, I'm trying. Am I a better person than I was yesterday? If the answer is yes, you are winning. And if the answer is no, you're losing. Subhanallah. And if you feel you're becoming a better person, your heart is becoming purer. You will feel less hate in your heart. You will feel a softness in your heart. Because Allah says a sign of the mercy of Allah is the softening of your heart and the leniency that you feel in your character. Listen to what Allah says to his most beloved. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَأَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ Allah says, it is indeed by the mercy of Allah that you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, are lenient towards those around you, towards them, them referring to those who were there at the time, so Allah says, it's a sign of the mercy of Allah. I want to pause for a moment. When I'm lenient, it means Allah is having mercy on me. When I have a softened heart, it means Allah is having mercy on me. When I'm harsh and hard, and when I feel a lot of hate, and when I feel so much energy to harm people, then I have definitely divorced myself from the mercy of Allah. Where did we get it from? I read the verse for you. Allah says, it is indeed by the mercy of Allah that you were lenient. So if Allah didn't have mercy, there would be no leniency. Subhanallah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you were harsh and hard hearted, they would disperse from around you. Take a look at those who lead a lonely life. A lonely life. Sometimes it's because of their character their nature. I remember a recent problem someone had with their in-laws and they told me, I really don't mind serving my mother-in-law. She is elderly. I really don't mind serving my father-in-law. He is elderly, but they have a tongue that really chases me away from them. Subhanallah. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm, am I like that? Am I a person who the way I speak chases people away? If that's the case, surely that togetherness we're talking about is not going to be achieved starting from the home. So you need leniency in order to achieve togetherness. Because Allah says, if you were not lenient, if you were not soft in the way you spoke, the way you interacted with them, they would have dispersed. Where would you achieve the togetherness that we're talking about? So you want togetherness in your home? You want to fight the loneliness? Be good to people. They will love your company. They will love it because whenever they're with you, it's always good things. It's if a reminder has to come, it's in the best possible way. When Allah says, Udu ila sabini rabbika bil hikmah wal mawidatil hasana. When you're calling towards the path of your maker, when you're calling towards the path of your Rabb, your Lord, call towards him with the greatest of wisdom, tact in a beautiful way. And when you're discussing things, give and take, question and answer, do it in the most beautiful way, subhanallah. Do we do that in our own homes? Calling people towards what we want, and it's just an instruction. Hey, give me the water. I said something, by the way. It's okay, Sheikh. It's okay, I forgive you. Uh, he still didn't give me the water. Can you see? Do you see what happened? He didn't give me water, subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry, I'll give you mine if you need it, even if you're harsh, because some of us are made that way. But my brothers and sisters, you get my point? You can say, please. You can even, if you love someone so much and you're so kind to them, the, the moment you're looking at the water, Subhanallah, they might start passing it to you because they know, oh wow, it looks like they want it. Reminds me of a trip I made to India many years ago, and I have to share this with you because 
I didn't know traditions and cultures. You know, it's interesting to know people's culture so that you don't offend them. And it's interesting to know people's culture so that you can respond correctly, you know. So I was brought up knowing that if someone told you you have a nice watch, you can say, yeah, mashallah, thank you, alhamdulillah. I didn't know that in some parts of India, if they say you have a nice watch, it means you're going to take it out and say, take it, have it. If not, you didn't understand. And a brother kept coming to me and telling me, you know, he came into my room and I was a student, subhanAllah, and I had a very nice blanket. It was with me from Medina Munawwara and I carried it with me because it was a mink blanket, by the way. So the mink part of it was very interesting. I thought, subhanAllah, I'll keep it. It was warm, by the way. You know, not, the minks are not bad, by the way. Mashallah. So I kept this blanket. He came, he says, this is a lovely blanket. And I said, yeah, you know, mashallah, it is. It's from Medina. And so he said, oh, that's, it makes it even better. And I'm thinking, wow, okay. And he came back a week later. I'm just checking, is that blanket there? And I'm like, what? And I, I spoke to someone about it. And he told me that means he wants the blanket. <laughs> so lo and behold, I parted ways with that blanket. I put it back into its little packaging it had. Back in the day, I'm talking of 1998. And I packaged it and I gave it to this brother. I said, you know, I've got your blanket. And he says, oh, Jazakallah khair. He, tell, he tells me, you have a nice watch as well. I told him, well, you know what? I bought this from down the road. If you want one, you can buy it because that's enough. Subhanallah, it's enough. One thing, I mean, he'll leave me without any clothing. Subhanallah. But the idea is, <laughs> I tried my best to let him, you know, to, to speak to him, not knowing the culture. And he kept asking, oh, I just came to see if the blanket is there. Like, you know, guy, you're supposed to know what I'm saying and doing. My brothers and sisters, Allah has created us. We need to go out of our way to learn different cultures, to learn about different people. We all enjoy different types of food. Why not the culture? How many of us love Chinese food, but the most you can say is ni hao, right? Learn to say a few words. I promise you, if you speak someone's language, the togetherness will be achieved quicker than you can dream of. Imagine someone looks at you and subhanallah, they wouldn't dream you spoke Hausa, for example. And then you come up and you start rattling out this Hausa and you look like a pure, for example, Caucasian. They would say, wow, hey, man. And they would offer you everything, their food and drink, and they would take you home and be excited about you. And you're, subhanAllah, what happened? We built a relationship because we made an effort to appreciate others. The problem with us, we sometimes only appreciate ourselves. And therefore, we look at others as though that's someone else. No, it's your duty to build the bridge. It's your duty to understand them because that's why Allah made you. Allah made you to appreciate one another, to understand that we are different as a test from Allah. When we go back to him, he's going to ask us, I made all these creatures. You fulfilled my right by praying five times a day, by, for example, fulfilling what I asked you, by abstaining from prohibitions such as alcohol and gambling and pornography and what have you. But did you fulfill a whole chapter known as Hukukul Ibad, known as the rights? of fellow worshippers? Did you? Have you fulfilled the rights of others? And this is why even those who are different from us, Allah says, you need to be kind to them. You need to fulfill their rights. You need to go out of your way to ensure that they understand that you know we are brothers and sisters in humanity to begin with. لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُقْسِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ in this verse of Surah Al-Muntahina, Allah is explaining to us how He does not prohibit you from being kind and just towards those who have not fought you. They have not driven you out of your homes. They have not been your direct and clean cut enemies. You have to be kind. You have to reach out. You have to fulfill the rights. You can befriend as well. Subhanallah, people think, you know, I'm a Muslim. So the non-Muslims out there, I cannot become friends with them. My brother. You can even marry them under certain circumstances. Do you know that? Wow. How come? Subhanallah. So that means you've understood the verse totally wrong. 
you can befriend those who are not Muslim on condition that they have not personally driven you out of your home or fought you directly because in that case your own mother or father would give you advice as a child to say listen be careful this person is going to harm you don't befriend them don't we tell our children don't just accept candy from a stranger why do we say that does that mean that suddenly we've created a huge disaster between us and the rest of humanity no we're just protecting ourselves that's what it means but it doesn't mean you become strangers to you become enemies to all strangers no you teach your children to sallim ala kulli man arafta wa man lam ta'rif. You will greet everyone, those you know and those you don't know. Don't we have a sickness? We only greet those we know. Those we know. And I remember doing a, a little experiment once when we had the brothers in the masjid. And I could see people uh, greeting, you know, so you're looking, there's 50 brothers between you and the guy you know, and you're bypassing all of them. And you're saying, hey, hey, salam, salam. So, between you and them, someone else thinks you're greeting them. So they say, Salam, say, no, not you, the other one. And I'm like, hang on, guys, hang on. You're supposed to be greeting everyone. Salam alaikum, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon you. It's such a beautiful supplication. May peace be upon you. If that's the case, the angels are saying, may peace be upon you too. Do you know that? Because whenever you make a supplication for someone, the angels say, oh Allah, grant them the same. So make a good supplication, not a bad one. When something goes wrong between you and someone else to maintain the togetherness, you don't say, oh Allah, destroy them. <laughs> destroy them for what? Because if that's the case, imagine the angel saying, oh Allah, give him the same. And suddenly your back is hurting. Why? You're being destroyed by your own prayer. May Allah forgive us. Rather say, oh Allah, bless them, grant them, give them. Open their hearts, soften their hearts, make them better people. Let them learn to love one another and let me become a part of those whom they love. Subhanallah. And that person really didn't get along with you. They really didn't like you. And suddenly a few days down the line, they come and apologize to you. Why? You were sincere in your prayer. That's one thing we need to correct tonight. When you don't like someone, say a good prayer for them, not a bad one. Because that will impact upon humanity. Why is it that we've trained ourselves? You don't like someone, you didn't get along with someone, they did something wrong. First thing we do is we want to destroy them too. Why? May the Almighty grant us this togetherness. Imagine in your own homes, you have your own children, subhanallah, and you have your own parents. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. Say, Ameen. Even though they might be in minority, but our hearts go out for them. Wallahi, your sacrifice when you don't have kids and you really would like to have kids, that sacrifice is one of the reasons, inshallah, that you will be driven to paradise perhaps before others. May Allah grant you goodness and all of us. I mean, so whatever your circumstances are, when people do something wrong, we can break up the home in a flash. And this goes to our marriages too. You know, we talk of togetherness. When I saw that word togetherness, I thought to myself, hang on, this starts at home before anywhere else. People are ready to break their marriage because of a mistake made by the spouse. Done. One mistake, that's it, I'm home. I the spouse. Come on. If we had to destroy people because of mistakes they made, we would all be destroyed today. In your own home, you know, I give the example of a motor vehicle. If you're Bentley is damaged with a scratch. You don't just say, right, I'm going back to my Toyota. Subhanallah. Oh, you don't just throw it away and say, that's it, out. No, you repair it. Sometimes, I promise you, ask me about my vehicle. Okay, it's not so fancy, mashallah. But alhamdulillah, there, is, there are so many scratches that only I know about. No one else knows about. No one notices anything until you decide. It's like when we look in the mirror, every one of us, I think, I think, you see something wrong, you know, there's more hair this side than this side. There's the nose is going this way and that's happening and the eyes are like this. And Allah's made you like that. Just say, I love you. Alhamdulillah, I'm out. MashaAllah. People will love you for who you are. You don't need to come and pretend. SubhanAllah, you, would, you wouldn't mind living with who you are because you know that Allah made you and you shouldn't mind living with who you are. You should learn to love yourself. It's the third time I'm saying this this evening because a lot of us, it starts within. When you're happy within yourself, when you're happy with yourself, when you've come to terms with whom you are, who you are, when you've come to terms with who you are because Allah made you that way and you love yourself for that, you start loving others. You start caring for others. You're happy. You don't have to look like someone. You look like yourself. So subhanAllah, in a home, 
We are bound to have things going wrong. Our children will do things that are wrong. Correct them in a beautiful way. Recently, I had someone whose child did something really nasty. And I said to this person, they're only a child. Give them a chance. Speak to them. It's your duty as a parent to ensure that you reach out to this child because at that age, they need to be corrected. They need to be corrected again and again. What is the limit? Well, at times, you know what? The limit is very, very far. It probably is not even there. If that's your child, you try right to the end. I know of children who've actually become guided after the death of their parents. And they've seen the light and they've become better people. And I know it's difficult. Some habits are very bad. But subhanallah, don't just break your home. Don't just kick somebody out. It's your duty. It's the effort that you're going to have to make. If you don't want this problem, Allah might introduce something else in your life that might be more difficult for you to actually deal with. The same applies to your spouse. A few minutes we can spend on this inshallah. If something is a mistake, learn to deal with it. When you see the remorse and the apology, you may want to move on without talking about it. That's very good advice to maintain this togetherness. But if something becomes a habit where you really cannot live with it, it's so oppressing that subhanallah, it's affecting your life. You may want to take it to another level. You try to deal with it again and again. And this is the mercy of Allah that yes, divorce is permissible. The separation is permissible. And sometimes it's the only way out. When that happens, then let it be. But it's not the first point of stopping. It's not the first thing you should think of. May Allah make us from those who can actually live together right until the hereafter. Those marriages that have gone through suffering and struggling and worked together through that are far more successful and their relation is far greater than those perhaps who don't even want to tolerate anything from the beginning and not even help, not help. And please, my brothers, you know, I know it's quite uh, dark out there, but I can see you guys looking at me like, mm, okay, okay. And then you're going to go back home and say, did you hear? You got to tolerate, you got to give us chances and that's it. Now you can have your tick off list. Come on. We don't want to use it against one another. Be normal, be reasonable and understand that there is a bigger picture. What is the bigger picture? If you work hard on your home with your children, spend more time with your children than you do on your phone, you will be able to contribute towards your society, community, your nation, and it will build humanity. The problem with us, children are being brought up by what? By the phone, by the mobile, by social media, by their friends, they're interacting with all sorts. We have never guided them because we don't even have time. For us, it's all about enjoying. Enjoying what? What we want. Hang on. Marriage comes with responsibility. Children come with responsibility because you need to show them the way to live with others whom they differ with so that we can build a world where we respect each other's difference and celebrate it. If you don't spend time with your children, how will they know that you need to get along with people of different nationalities and races and that no nationality is superior to another? We never spoke to them. I recall many years back, there was a father who was walking with his child and they saw people of a different race and the, the little child began to say bad words and the father says, no, that's wrong. And the father called these people and said, please, can you spend a few minutes with me? I'd like to teach my child. Perhaps the child has not interacted with people of this race. And so the father spent a moment explaining to the child how important it is to acknowledge these people because they are very lovely people and so on. It's a long story, but mashallah, the, the knowledge that I learned from it was, sometimes we haven't even taught our children how to respect people. You know, you have those who are working class, and sometimes you have those who have jobs that are perhaps uh, considered low in terms of salary, but not low in terms of community, because if you didn't have them, your, your environment might not be that clean. I always say, if you want to know who you are, 
You've got to ask yourself one question. How do I treat the person whom the world considers very low or the lowest? Do you take a moment to greet the person who's cleaning the street? If you're passing them, do you look at them and Assalamu alaikum, acknowledge them? At least a small smile, make them feel like they're human. I think a lot of us don't. Not because we're bad people, but because we are not conscious of it. We haven't thought of it. It's a human. One day the tables may turn and not just one day. In your own life, you might find people who perhaps might treat you or, you or those around you or your loved ones in such a way that you wouldn't like to be treated, but you haven't realized you've treated others like that without thinking. Go out of your way. Yesterday, I went into a supermarket and there is a man in a yellow uniform trying to help me with the uh, plastic bags, you know, packing a few things that I needed. And I looked at him and I smiled. And I think he looked at me when I greeted him and gave him so much importance, I shook his hand, you know, and he thought I was from outer space. That doesn't happen. And he just says, like swallowing, he said, Walaikum Salaam, Walaikum Salaam. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I said, May Allah bless the soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him goodness. I am no one to actually be a role model. The role model is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The role model are the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. But the problem is we don't know enough about them. They were kind even to their enemies, subhanallah. They were kind even to their enemies, those who didn't like them. And that's the way that everyone came towards the deen of Allah. Today, we're ambassadors of Islam, ambassadors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I promise you, we chase people away from the deen. We think it's all about salah. Okay, I fulfilled my salah. It is absolutely important. It's a pillar of your faith. I do agree. But if it has not improved your character and your conduct, then there's something wrong with your prayer. Your piety shows in your character. So if your character has not become developed, something wrong with your piety. You think you're pious, but you're not. And how do we know this? Look at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When his wife was asked about his character. Tell us about the character of this great man, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She says, Kana Quran. His character was the Quran, meaning he fulfilled everything he had to. He was a beautiful man, loving. When he said, Who the best from amongst us is, he added something at the end. Do you want to hear it? Okay, so he, he says, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. I'm sure you've heard this before, right? The best from among you are those who are best to his wives, his family members. You know the term ahl, it includes your family members, okay? And that's difficult because for our spouses to acknowledge and to bear witness that this person is really a great person. It's not so easy. I think if you tell your wife, for example, say there's a guy called Mr. John, for example. Say, how's Mr. John? John? Huh. John? Huh. You really think you know him? <laughs> ah, know him. That's what she would say. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Let it be such that no, he's a really good man. Imagine, he says, the best from among you are those who are best to your wives, your children, etc., etc. The only point the men pick up from that is the plural of wife, astaghfirullah. That's it. And they stop there. Did you hear the hadith? It says wives. Did you hear that? You've lost the plot. Come on, clean your mind up. Subhanallah. Clean your mind up. May Allah forgive us. And this proves something. Shaykhna, do you know what happens? When you talk, People pick up what suits them. And so they say, you know what? You only support the women. No, I think you're deaf. Maybe you don't take the time to listen. You can come up with something too, subhanallah. And then the women will say, no, you only support the men. The idea is, no, it's balanced, but we take automatically without realizing what suits us. So here the hadith says, the best of you are the best to your wives and children. He ends by saying, Wa ana khayrukum li ahlihi. And I want to guarantee you that I am the best from all of you to my own family members. Wow. Subhanallah. That was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I think we need to go and look at his life more and study how he 
spoke to his family members and how he addressed others and how he interacted with them. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are upon a very great level, the greatest level of character and conduct that man could ever get to. I need to work towards that. I claim to be a follower of this messenger, but I only follow again what suits me. Where it doesn't, I don't. Let's try our best to become people who can learn to appreciate others. Like I said, it starts off in the house and the circle continues at our workplace. First few days you go and you think, wow, these people don't like me. Do something about it, they will like you. And be respectful, reach out to others. I find in my life that a smile actually does more than you think it does. Wallahi. And that's why when I go back to the hadith and I read about how important it is and how big an act of charity it is to smile and I start thinking, wow, if only we could smile. Subhanallah, it's not so easy to do that when you have braces, by the way, but you, you have to, you must, subhanallah. It breaks a lot of ice. It says so much about you. You know, we have people who interact with us at our workplace and we just look at each other. And that's it. <laughs> Even the expression on the face is so gloomy. And then we want togetherness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Let's talk about tolerance a little bit. Tolerance is a word that sometimes I feel is the basic. You know, when you have a vehicle, you have that which has no extra specs, you know, nothing. It's just the car. Everything is normal. It's got no extras. But then you have a top spec which goes way beyond that. And the value of the car increases the more the specs are. So to say I tolerate you, let's be honest, what does that mean? That means it's very hard. I, I really wouldn't like to, but I'm going to tolerate you. I don't know if I'm wrong, but that's what I get. When I say tolerate, I'm tolerating the brother. For example, he didn't pass me the water. I'm tolerating him, tolerance. It's good because we're still sitting, we're still laughing, we're still okay, etc. But I can tell you a higher level, something we need to get to that people don't talk about. Respect. I respect you. That is way better than tolerating you. Because then I'm teaching myself and others that you have the right. Allah is the one who's going to judge you at the end of the day. Even if you belong to another faith, guess what? I respect you and I respect the difference. You are a human. You are a person who's entitled just as I am. I'm convinced by something. You're convinced by something else. I respect you. I will continue speaking to you respectfully and you have every right to continue to speak to me respectfully. And at the end of the day, I will firmly believe that what I have is correct. And I firmly believe, for example, that you have the right to believe what you have is correct. That's respect. I've respected you and I will get along with you. I will fulfill your rights and I will ensure that within my heart, I'm not filled with hatred against you for the mere choice that you've made. Like I said, it does not contaminate the difference we have. And this is where people don't understand. People think, oh, are you trying to say that all religions on the earth should just become one big religion? No. That's exactly the opposite of what we're saying. What we're saying is to be able to respect people who have chosen totally differently. Subhanallah. It's not easy. But that's what will actually contribute towards our development. You know, Allah says, La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion when it comes to entering the fold of Islam. You cannot force someone to be a Muslim. You cannot force someone into submission. No. You keep on discussing, you keep on talking. It has to be done with respect. Look at the duty of the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah says, Ma ala rasooli illa al -bala. The duty of the messenger is nothing besides conveying the message. And the guide is from Allah. Allah is the guide, he will guide. So I must learn to respect people and I must learn to appreciate and acknowledge people. I give you my own example. 
we develop as the years pass, don't we? As we age, we become more settled, we start looking at things differently, we mature in our outlook and so many different things, and we start realizing that, you know, perhaps back in the day, we might have been looking at things from a little bit of a hard angle and so on. You know what? I've noticed and I've realized that when you greet people or when you acknowledge people or reach out to people who are different from you, even a different faith, what happens? You actually feel so good because you know you did it for the sake of Allah. When I'm good to you, am I doing good to you because I want good back from you? If the answer is yes, that's just a business deal. But if I'm good to you because Allah loves those who do good, then I've developed myself. So whether you do good back to me or not is irrelevant. I will still do good to you. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsinin. So many times in the Quran, Allah says, indeed, Allah loves those who do good. That's why I do good. 